Imagine a majestic eagle soaring high above a vast landscape, observing the intricate patterns of rivers, mountains, and forests that make up its territory. Now picture a honeybee, busily darting from flower to flower, focused on the minute details of each petal and pollen grain. These two perspectives, one wide-ranging and the other close-up, aptly illustrate the differences between macroeconomics and microeconomics. In the grand scheme of things, macroeconomics is the eagle's view. It's concerned with the broad strokes, the big picture. It's the study of economic phenomena at the national, regional, or global level. Think of concepts like inflation, unemployment, and gross domestic product. A classic example of macroeconomics at work is the Great Recession of 2008. When the housing market in the United States crashed, it set off a domino effect that rippled through the global economy. Governments around the world had to intervene, implementing policies to stimulate growth and stabilize their economies. On the other hand, microeconomics is more like the bee's perspective. It's all about the fine details. It focuses on individual units within the economy, like households, firms, and specific markets. It examines how these entities make decisions based on the resources available to them. Take, for instance, the case of a small coffee shop in a bustling city. The owner has to make numerous decisions, such as how much to charge for a cup of coffee, how many employees to hire, and how much to spend on advertising. These decisions are influenced by various factors like competition, supply and demand, and the costs of production. At the end of the day, the key differences between macro and microeconomics lie in their focus and their application. Macroeconomics takes a bird's eye view, looking at the economy as a whole. It deals with aggregate indicators and government policies. Microeconomics, in contrast, zooms in on the individual elements within that economy. It's concerned with the choices and behaviors of individual units, the interactions between them, and how these affect supply and demand. However, it's important to remember that macro and micro are not mutually exclusive. They're two sides of the same coin. After all, the decisions of millions of individuals and businesses as studied in microeconomics collectively shape the broader economic trends that macroeconomics seeks to understand. So whether you're soaring high like an eagle or delving into the details like a busy bee, both perspectives are essential for a comprehensive understanding of the complex and fascinating world of economics.